standing for prayer. service with prayer this morning. Do remember everything on the prayer sheet this morning if you would. A little special prayer. We're asking everyone to start praying for our revival. It starts in about four weeks, the 15th of next month. Say a little special prayer for Sister Nola. She has a procedure in the morning. You know, we were talking about it Wednesday night. We've had a lot of folks that's had a lot of prayers answered, so you're going at a good time. We're on a win winning streak around here, uh, you know, for the Lord. Wonder if you'd have any special requests other than what we mentioned earlier this morning on our prayer sheet, Brother Billy. Yes. Yes. Yeah. She's battling through cancer. That's my uh, uh, daughter-in-law's mother. She lives in Old Hickory, up in Nashville. Any other requests, Brother Billy? You lead us in prayer, then, if you would.
Well, we do welcome each one to our morning worship. I was telling the choir, I don't know how good we are, but I tell you one thing, we have a good time doing it. That don't count for something, you know. Folks, I want to post a, an alert, very important alert, for Tennessee and the southeast just come through this morning. There are three hurricanes out in, uh, headed this way, and the last one's named Lee. So <laughs> be careful, stuff. I like what somebody said, said, Lee's pushing them all, all this way. Uh, you know, I was just kidding, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, it's a joy to see each one this morning, and God bless you for being here today. We want to make a few announcements, and then we'll uh, do our offering, and then we'll uh, uh, have Sister Wanda going to sing for us. Remember our evening worship at 5 o'clock? Uh, come a little early. We have fairly good turnout. I don't know how many problems we solve, but if we enjoy solving them, you know. Try to come out a little early. I come down usually about four, a little after. We start at five o'clock. Remember prayer meeting at 6.30. Sister Noel, are you going to do six o'clock this week? 5.30? Uh, <laughs> I'll give you a few minutes. Pending, I talked with Miss Linda okay. this week. I got you. Sounds like a winner. I, I, I like, yeah, I'll be here. So, yeah. Hey, remember next Sunday morning, right after the morning worship hour, Sister Judy is going to be just a few minutes with the ladies, because not this coming Saturday, but Saturday week, uh, we're, the 30th, we're going to have our church get together out at uh, uh, Brother Phillips, Sister Nolan, Sister Shirley, and their family's house. Well, I was enjoy. Y'all do a great job, you know, and we look forward to that. So she'll just work. Usually ladies know just about everything. They do a good job, but she'll meet just to be on the uh, safe side. Uh, also, be sure to uh, sort of be keeping in mind the first Sunday in October. It's not far off. We'll do a building fund offer. We don't do it on our youth Sunday any longer. Also, uh, you know, we'll be coming up on quarterly business, conference, communion feet washing, and also our, our youth Sunday, the, the last of October. So those are just some things we'll uh, sort of keep in front of you. But in your daily prayer sheet, we write Brother Doyle Pruitt's name down in the revival. Uh, we're going to have a great revival. Well, Jeremiah said, you feel it in your bones. I believe we're going to have a good revival, you know. Those are about all the announcements for our ushers to come. Brother Larry, are you able to come? It's good to have you. Okay. And, uh, Brother Philip, you come up and help us if you would this morning. Brother Jimmy Brown, would you stand and bless the offering this morning? This time, Sister Wanda is going to provide music for us since you come. Many of you have sinus problems this past week and this week and hoarseness. Everybody, everybody, and I'm I'm not exempt from that either. So we'll do the best we can. This is called Thomas.
Thomas sat down at the table and buried his face in his hands. Suddenly grief overtook him, for he had just lost his best friend. They not only crucified Jesus, they cursed him and put him to shame. Shaken from what he had witnessed that day, Thomas would not be the same. They crowned him with thorns they had gathered, and one of them spat in his face. Father, forgive them, he cried out, hanging in a guilty man's place. They tenderly wrapped him in linen and carefully sealed up his tomb. Three days then Thomas thought he saw a ghost face to face in that old upper room. I am your king, Thomas I live. What must I do before you're convinced? Look at my hands, come touch my side. What more will you need before you believe I am alive? You saw them piercing my body. You heard that old hammer ring. You saw the tomb where they laid me. But the grave has no hold on the king. Oh, Thomas, I know how you're hurting. And Thomas, I know how you've cried. Lift up your head, believe with your heart. Come place your hand in my side. I am your king. Thomas, I live. What must I do? Before you're convinced, look at my hands, come touch my side. What more will you need before you believe I am alive? What more will you need? For you believe I am I've never heard that song, Thomas, till she introduced to hear some several years ago, I guess now, but that's right out of the Bible. That's a good, good song. If you have your Bibles, turn with me this morning, if you would, to, to the book of Hebrews, chapter 10. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10. The Bible says in verse 19, I want to share a thought with you this morning on what the blood does. And I'll sort of clarify that just briefly in a moment. Verse 10 says, notice, 
Having therefore, brethren, boldness. That means confidence. Having therefore, brethren, boldness or confidence to enter into the holiest, how? By the blood of Jesus. Father, as we break the bread of life this morning, we pray that what you've given to us to share this morning would be beneficial and helpful to all those that are gathered into this place. Speak to our hearts together and honor us with your presence. You've been mighty good to us and we are very, very grateful and appreciative. If there's anyone here this morning that needs a fresh touch from heaven in their life, may they make that decision today. Lord, we cannot preach this message, cannot share this thought without your wonderful, wonderful, marvelous touch by way of the Holy Spirit. So help us to share it in a way that will be pleasing to thee. And we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray and amen. You know, <clears throat> in 20 seconds, do you realize that your blood will circulate through your body? Think about that. In 24 hours, your heart will have beat 100,000 times. In fact, now in more than 30 years, Nashville, their medical centers have been performing heart catheterization and all types of advanced open heart surgery. Things have sure changed. But I've done a little research uh, with some the American Blood Centers some uh, years ago, and I learned some things I didn't know. In the United States, every day, there are over 40,000 pints of blood uh, donated in daily use, for, just for example. Um, who receives transfusions? 53% females, 47% uh, are males, for example. But uh, wh when that blood flows through your body, it's, it's separated into three areas. There's plasma, there's uh, red cells, and it's what they call platelets. And one other I'll tell you about in a moment. Plasma is what carries the blood cells. Red cells carry oxygen through the body. Platelets control bleeding. But white cells is what defends the body against diseases. And you know, I thought, I can't even know the exact figure of how many blood transfusions daily take place in Nashville. And, all, and by the way, I have no problem with it. I'm not preaching against blood transfusion. My wife had several, by the way. But what I'm saying is those transfusions of blood are designed as lifesavers. If you lose your blood, you'll die. Your heart pumps the blood through your veins in your body and, and oxygen and so forth is what keeps you alive. But I marvel that we can have those statistics, we can have all that general knowledge, a hematologist who uh, explores such thing tells us, and that's rather interesting. However, I marvel that not a one of us, if we need the blood transfusion, would probably uh, go ahead and do it because it might save our life. But I wonder how many turn away from the most important blood transfusion, which is a spiritual blood transfusion. We're talking about if you're going to live beyond this life, it's going to be because that you have discovered the fact that the blood of Jesus Christ is what cleanses us from all sins and helps us to gain entrance in heaven when this life comes to a close. You know, in our text, the book of Hebrews, uh, the Bible says, having therefore brethren, boldness or confidence to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. So let me just say to you this morning, what does the blood do? Stop and think about it. Uh, to sum it all up in, in just one statement, what does the blood do? Well, number one, uh, the blood of Jesus Christ takes away all sin. Uh, just like uh, the death sentence was pronounced upon your life physically, unless you received a transfusion and you received that transfusion, and a physical life was once again restored into your body. So if you want to get technical, sort of like our Sunday school lesson this morning, if you're not saved, if the blood of Jesus Christ has not eradicated your sins, then you're walking around as a dead man or a dead woman or a dead boy or girl. 
because you have not had a blood transfusion by faith uh, in your life spiritually. You know, uh, the blood of Jesus Christ is designed to take away sins. In fact, here in just a few weeks, we'll be having uh, communion. We have that on Sunday night. And in Matthew chapter 26 and verse 28, the Bible says, for this is Jesus in instituting the, the cup. He said, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins or the forgiveness of sins. <clears throat> That's what the word remission means. Think about that. The blood. I know sometimes we think it's sort of uh, gory to think about the blood, but folks, it's, it's that precious blood that Jesus shed on the cross at Calvary <clears throat> that washes away our sins. We're told in the book of Revelation, chapter one and verse five, listen to these words. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth. Now watch this, are you listening? <clears throat> Unto him, number one, that loved us. Number two, and washed us from our sins in his own blood. You can't hardly spell it, no, but it's not water, it's blood. The precious blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross at Calvary was shed <clears throat> that you might have life and have life, the Bible says, more abundantly and eternal, uh, for example. Dearly beloved, it's not another person, it's not bull's blood, as the Old Testament, goat's blood like in the Old Testament, pigeons, uh, turtle dove. It's the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And when we, by faith, receive Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, that should be explained to you, but you're recognizing that shed blood on the cross at Calvary that eradicates your sin. Jesus said, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. And then John the Revelator wrote, it was his own blood that washes us from our sins. That's a wonderful thing when you think about it. Number two, the blood of Jesus Christ redeems us. You realize this morning, sometimes we fail to realize that because we come to the altar, we confess our sins, we ask God to forgive us a course of our sins and we, we walk out a brand new boy or girl in Christ Jesus. We fail to realize there was a price paid for that salvation experience. And it was the precious blood of Jesus Christ. You know, in Ephesians chapter one and verse seven, the Bible says, in whom we have redemption. Notice that. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Think about that. I want to share that again with you. In whom, that's a personal pronoun referring to Jesus Christ. In whom we have redemption. How? Through his blood. We're in, what does the word redeem mean? It means to buy back. In other words, Jesus Christ brought to us eternal life in the fact that he shed his blood that you and I through him might have life. He said so clearly and explicitly in whom we have redemption through his blood, forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. And then in, I love chapter 9 <clears throat> along about verse 12, now listen to these words. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his, watch this now, his own, O-W, in his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place through obtaining eternal redemption uh, for <clears throat> us. Isn't that wonderful? You might say sometimes, I've heard people get so down and low, don't nobody love me. And I've, I don't know how many people I've told, wait a minute now, call, shh, call time out. Let me tell you about somebody that does love you. Jesus Christ loves you. He died for you. Well, I, and that's right. Listen, so I know somebody that loves you this morning and loves me. Jesus Christ loves you this morning and he proved that love. Willingly, obediently, submissively, he went to that cross suffered, bled, and shed his precious blood that you and I through him might have this wonderful life that we're living in Christ Jesus today, knowing that this present life is not the end. Knowing that if we step from this walk of life through the door of death, we gain entrance to a better place. And if we have had that blood transfusion, spiritually speaking, by way of acceptance through faith, 
we've got a better place beyond this present life than we've ever lived here in this present life. You know, number three, he's taken our sins and redeemed us by his blood. Boy, boy I love that. Now by his blood, because of that, we're justified. <clears throat> you know, our Sunday school lesson talked a lot about this morning about standing before God and giving an account. And you know, the wonderful thing is the Bible says much more now being justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. You know, the, the joy bells of heaven ought to ring in your soul this morning because you're innocent. Jesus Christ took our sins. We bent our knee, bowed our head, cried out the fact that we were a sinner by faith. We believed that Jesus Christ uh, uh, was the Son of God. Uh, it's wonderful. Not was, but is. He still is the Son of God, and we were saved. Our sins was forgiven. The blood was applied to our sin account, and we're saved. That's a wonderful, wonderful thing because of Christ's blood, and we've been declared innocent. Isn't that wonderful? We've made peace with God. The book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 20 talks about through his precious blood we have obtained peace with God. Now I never realized that for many, many uh, months after I got saved. And I didn't understand that at first. I didn't realize we was at war against God because we were sinners. We've done things evil and wicked we know now we shouldn't have done but we've, we did it. And it's over. It's history. That book's closed in our life. That chapter's closed. That whole book is gone. Because the precious blood of Jesus Christ has taken away uh, our sins. So just as an individual receives a transfusion physically to meet the need that he has, perhaps beyond surgery, perhaps even there's something that needs uh, some reasons before surgery, they might have, to have the blood. But that's to sustain our life. And folks, the precious blood of Jesus Christ not only will save us, but it will sustain our life throughout this life and throughout eternity to come. That's a wonderful thing when you think about it. You know, we're told in the book of Colossians, the Bible says in verse 20, and having made peace. Now, how do we make peace? The Bible says through the blood of his cross to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say, whether there be things in earth or things uh, in heaven, in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy, unblameable, unreprovable in his sight, or innocent, and having made peace, how? Through his blood. It's a bloody sermon, but it's the truth. It's the blood. It's still the blood. I love that old song. It's still the blood. Boy, I tell you what, I, I never realized that for a long time. I came to an altar just like everyone else did, and I faith, done what I was instructed to do, followed the plan of salvation, and a little later on I realized something. You know, I, I was fighting the Lord. I, was, I, couldn't, I couldn't win. I mean, he's the creator of this whole universe. He's the creator of mankind. You know, Brother Jim, ain't no way I could win the battle, but I didn't know that. I was evil in a lot of ways. And it's amazing. Uh, again, not to be repetitious, just like that transfusion, which sometimes you have to have that physically speaking. But I had a transfusion at an altar on a Thursday night during a revival, spiritually speaking, and that blood eradicated my sins, and I was a brand new individual in Christ Jesus, a brand new husband, a brand new father, a different individual, and I owe it all to the blood, the precious blood that was shed uh, on, on my behalf. You know What a wonderful thing. In our text, the Bible says, having therefore, brethren, boldness or confidence to enter into the Holy Spirit, by the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus Christ. You see, dear brother, stop and think this morning. Call time out. Do an inventory. Take a look at your life this morning. Uh, by peace this morning. If you have peace this morning. Or if you plan on making peace with God this morning. You know, through the precious blood of his son, uh, of his of son, God's son. Number one, he forgave my sin. Number two, he redeemed me. Number three, he justified me. Number four, he's given me peace. I made a peace treaty with God at an altar of prayer just like many of you did. Maybe we didn't know all the uh, theological 
uh, a terminology today, but the important thing is we knew there was something needed in our life. And it was the precious blood of Jesus Christ that we shed on the cross of Calvary that we through him might have eternal everlasting life. You, you, know, you can walk through the old covenant uh, of God's word. Boy, you, you'll find it was a, a, a bloody Old Testament. You, we have no way of probably ever knowing unless God would reveal it to us in heaven how many thousands upon thousands of sheep, goats, uh, turtle doves, pigeons were slain and their necks slit the blood drained and the high priest took it in the, behind the Holy of Holies and shed it on the mercy seat in atonement for the sins of the people. No, no, no tells we said maybe millions of animals were slain. And stop and think, Jesus Christ, one time, nailed to an old cross, hung high and suspended between heaven and earth, shed his precious blood that you and I, through him, might have this wonderful life that we have this morning. Folks, if you know him, you know peace. If you know him, you're saved this morning. If you know him, you gain entrance to a better place uh, beyond this present life. You know, we're told uh, in, in the book of Hebrews, uh, listen to these words. We're going to read just a couple of verses to you over here. The Bible says, For Christ is not entered into the holy place uh, made with hands. Think about that. He, he, does, he didn't get out some boards and a nail, nail and hammer and saw and start hammering and making a holy place made with hands, which are the figures of the truth, but in heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God. Think about that. To appear in the very presence of God. Uh, nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entered into the holy places every year with blood uh, others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, now watch this. Once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. But Christ was offered, now watch this, to bear the sins of many. Unto them that look for him shall he appear a second time without sin unto salvation. That wonderful? One time, one time only, Jesus Christ died in the old covenant it was a continual uh, shedding of blood, slitting of throats, draining of blood, applying it uh, to the mercy seat of God. But Jesus Christ, one time, done what the Old Testament law could not do, and we'll never, he'll never do it again. He's not coming back again, dearly beloved, to shed his blood. He's not coming back again to be nailed to a cross. He's not coming back to bleed and suffer and go through the agony and the terrible uh, way that mankind treated. When he comes back, it'll be for the resurrection of our bodies and the lifting of God's children for an eternal place that we call heaven. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to that. Well, I, I think of so many who have suffered so much, so many who have gone through so much. I think of all the anguish and all the pain. I, I can't even maybe have enough adjectives to describe it properly. But living in this present life, it does not offer us anything like God offers to us through his son, Jesus Christ, who shed his precious blood. He gave his all. And again, he's returning again, not to die. He's coming back to lift us, folks. And then we're going to stand before God, as our Sunday school lesson said this morning. And I'll tell you what, it's going to be, that may be where some tears are wiped away. Uh, you know, when some of our lives, when the books are open and our, our lives are brought forward and, and the deeds, whether they be good or whether they be bad. That's why Paul built his uh, motivation of his ministry on integrity. And he built it on the power of Jesus Christ and the gospel. The gospel will save your soul this morning. And it's amazing. I've always been amazed why I've seen people come to church and grab the back of the pew and hold on and leave. And I've never understood because, you know, it is the easiest thing in the world to be saved. It's not hard. 
But from the moment the word is preached, the Holy Spirit begins to work, the songs begin to be sung. Listen, the devil goes to work. Listen, he'll try to change your mind, your thought process, take your mind off the word of God, take your mind off heaven, take your mind off the, 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 the blood that was shed on your behalf. He'll take your mind away and let it concentrate on in and everything but being saved when it's easy. It's easy to be saved. I've seen a lot of folks saved. We praise the Lord for that. Man, they just came and didn't know a whole lot. Maybe I had some saved that couldn't read and write. But in their heart, they made peace with God through uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. I remember an older couple being one of my deacons, one of the Lord many years ago. Couldn't read, neither one of them could read and write. Raised up in Harlan County, Kentucky. Backward, real backward people. But I'll tell you, they might have been backward, but they knew how to be saved. We, men, one of the deacons took the word of God, shared with them. Both of them made, right outside in a swing, they made peace with God, came to, came to church on the next Sunday morning. We told them about baptism. Well, we want, we want to go all the way. And they said, couldn't read and write, but they want to go all the way with the Lord. And you know what? We uh, baptized them. They shouted. I don't know if we got, boy, I, I'd give anything for some good old shouting again like it used to be. And folks walking the aisle and concerned about their loved ones. I believe we're going, Brother Pruitt's a great mountain preacher. We're going to have some good preaching I hope we'll have some good presence of the Holy Spirit uh, th throughout the services. You know, I was teaching a Sunday school class and I, I worked up all the material. I gave it to the people in my class, about 20 or 30 in there. I come to them, I have to think, they can't read and write. I gave them a paper anyway. Nobody knew that but me. I never told nobody. Of course, they're dead and gone to be with the Lord now. I, they sat there with a paper and couldn't read and write. And I just went on to talk to class like I always did. I'd never embarrass nobody. You know, I'd been embarrassed. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't give you all the paper. You can't read and write. You can't hardly do that. I gave them a paper while they sat there. And read. You know, them folks came to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. As long as I was at church, they were faithful. And I've often can still see them sitting in that old swing outside in the front yard. Harlan County, Kentucky, old coal miner, retired, you know. See, the blood of Jesus Christ can do wonderful things like that. You know, it can take your life. I don't care how mean you've been, how much evil you've done, how many terrible things you've said. You can have a spiritual heart transfusion through the precious blood of Jesus Christ, and it will do for you what a transfusion of a, for the physical life could never do for this reason. You can have a physical uh, transfusion of blood. My wife had several. I'm sure some of you might have had it. And it will help you in your physical life. But it can never give you eternal life. You'll only die again. At some point along, unless Jesus comes back, you'll die again. But when you have this blood transfusion I'm talking about, by faith, you trust Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And that precious blood uh, is applied to your uh, account then you're forgiven, you have life eternal. And a physical blood transfusion can't do that. It'll help you in this life. and You may live another year, 10 years, another 20, 30 years. But you see, I'm talking about an eternal, eternal life that you can live through when you make peace with God through the precious blood by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May I ask you this morning, have you had a transfusion? Not, spirit, not physical now, spiritual of the blood. If you have, that means you're going to live forever. If you have this physical transfusion, it's all right, I have no problem with that. It'll help you to live a while, but you'll eventually, if Jesus don't come back, you're gonna still die. But right presently, if you have not applied that to your life, you need to come this morning and receive Jesus Christ as your personal savior. And if you need to rededicate your life to the Lord, then you need to make that decision. You see the doctors, the hospitals can offer you that opportunity. That's a wonderful program the hematologists have put together to sustain life. But I'm offering to you something better, eternal, forever, ever. May I say it, forever and ever, until ages roll by, just through simply confessing your sins by faith, trusting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Following the next step, which would be beautiful believers, Bible baptism, getting into the church and making your life count for Him. Father, we thank you this morning for your word. Lord, we thank you so much for 
uh, all that you do for us. You've been mighty good to us. And we do pray this morning, Father, as our song leader comes, our pianist comes, if there's anyone that needs the Lord this morning, I think about this so often. I never really saw all of this. I just heard the word, believed the word, came and trusted Jesus Christ. And I've never regretted it. I've never been the same because I received a spiritual transfusion of the great uh, blood that Jesus shed on the cross at Calvary. And I thank you for that. And I pray that you'd bless our church, our church family, help us be mindful, very mindful of what we have in Christ Jesus. We love you today and thank you for loving us when we were so unlovable. Speak to our hearts together as we sing an invitation. In Jesus' name we pray and amen. What page, my brother? 273. Be standing 273 in the blue book. Wonderful, wonderful song. Pass me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou do not pass me by. Oh, I'm glad the Lord didn't pass me by. Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me. We sing the second verse. Let me in a throne of mercy find a sweet relief. Kneeling there in deep contrition, help my unbelief. If you're not sure, you come. We'll take the word of God. Help of the Holy Spirit to help you be sure. Hear my humble cry While on others thou art called We're going to sing the third verse If you need prayer, you come this morning The third verse Trusting only in thy merit Would I seek thy face Think about it my wounded, broken spirit, save thy grace, Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. Through the precious blood, would you come? Sister Judy, I'm going to ask Snooks and Sue to sing that last verse. I want everyone's head bowed as they sing that last verse. If you need prayer, we, I'm going to step to the front. We'd invite you to come for prayer. They sing. If you need prayer, you come. Precious blood, precious blood. God bless you. We'll close our invitation here because we said we would. And I would remind you, church at five tonight, and come a little early and always have. A little something, munch, sometimes donuts, cookies, coffee. But I'll tell you, good fellowship. You try to come tonight. If you lay everything aside, set your alarm clock. If you get in your recline and go to sleep, set your alarm clock to wake up and come on down. We'll go to the Lord in prayer. Brother Clark, lead us in a prayer, if you would. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for a wonderful day and a good yeah. service, Lord. We're so grateful we have this privilege of worshiping you. 
please go with us, Lord, as we leave this service. And protect us and guide us. Help us to come back stronger than ever. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful afternoon.